Everyone and welcome back to the No Zone, the place where we have fun while we learn. I'm Charlie. Hello, everybody. I'm so happy to see you again. My name is Wanja. Hey, and I'm Marara. <laughs> hey, Marara, how are you doing today? Oh, I'm fine. I'm fine. I really learned a lot from Teacher Pendle last week, uh. and number one really helps my maths. Oh, That's great. excellent to hear, Marara. I'm glad to hear that you and everyone at home is learning so much. So we won't waste any minute. We will go to the chill out zone and meet our studio guests because this week you will learn even more. They're waiting patiently for us right now. Come on. Hello, everyone. Hello. How are you today? Fine. Let's say a big hello to everyone who is watching us at home. Hello. hello. Well, hello, everyone. Hello, Marana. Oh, I'm sorry I'm late. You know, this week's buzzwords are so important, so I had to pick my pencil and my paper so that I can write them down. Well done, Marara. Today's buzzwords are all about child labor. That's right, and it's very important for us to remember them and look out for them throughout the show. So, could you please tell us what they are for today? Labor. Responsibility. Beat. Try. Fight. These words are very important. So see how many of them you are able to spot throughout this show. Because it's time for... Junction Juniors! Junction Juniors! But dad, what about school and the junction? No, no, Babu. You have to understand. I have lost my job and your shosho here is too old to fend for our family. Right, we all have to try to get food for the family. But what about... You will have to find a way to get some extra cash to buy food. But what about school? Babu. About. You will have to find a way to get some extra cash to buy food. You, 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 you useless pieces of charcoal. Huh? Why can't you arrange yourselves? Huh? You don't have all the time in the world to keep on working on you, you purple heads. You see, I would pay anything, anything just to have this sorted and taken to the market. I need to put money in my pocket, and all you're doing is sitting on yourself, you see? Ah! Do you need help? Why me? I can help you if you pay me. Um, you see, this sack contains 30 kilograms of charcoal. Mm -hmm. These tins can carry two kilograms each. In essence, what I'm saying is, you'll arrange this sack into the 15 tins. Get it? Start working. <laughs> Hey, Brian, look, the sky is green. Yeah, look. Where? 
<laughs> okay, let's get started. I mean, she don't make it a hard. So our teacher has given Brian, James, Babu, and I just one day to form a team and debate on the topic child labor. The debate is tomorrow after class. I suggest we use the name Junction Jenny. Kwani, we were going to call ourselves Harambe Star. <laughs> <laughs> we are going to go against child labor, and we need your help. I would like to be the secretary. The participants have to be from our class only, so I'm sorry, Bakari, you can't be secretary. But you yes, thought teacher said we can pick someone from another class to help us on the debate. Okay, okay then Amishi Bakari and I will help in the research. Yes, I knew we could count on you. But since Babu is not here, I can work on the debating structure and Brian and James can do the debating. Yeah? What? I wonder why he did not make it to school today. Who? Huh? Babu! Well. Hey, I hope you didn't bring germs and viruses into my homestead. I think I'm done here. Are you sure? Huh? That was fast. Oh, but I know I've done it faster and better than you. It's only that you looked like you needed a job. See, you people from poor families. That will do, yeah? But you said you'll give me a hundred shillings. And who said the job is over? This is just for encouragement, huh? Babu, when you're done with this lot, then you'll get your hundred bob, right? But... But what, Babu? Do you need the money or not? Yes. Then get back to work. What's wrong with you? Yeah. You don't even have to pay up with this yeah. baby. Hey, you guys, I hear that Babu was saying going to Benson's house this morning. I hear that man is a bad man. You know, he locks children up in his house just to scare them. Hey, yeah. me, I was even told he makes children work and then they miss school. Eh? Hey. Maybe he even beats them to make them work. Oh, poor Babu. What will we do? Amishi, Brian, James, and I will go to Benson's house to I, check if I, Babu is there, okay? Then Bakari and I will go find Chief Matano. Oh. Oh. Come on, Junction Juniors! Yay! Hey! We had you in trouble. Go before he wakes up or I'll lose my money. Look, we are here to help you, eh? I can't go. My father lost his job and my grandmother is too old to work. I have to do the job, otherwise my family will starve. We never thought he was paying you. We thought that he was forcing you to work. Yeah, you have to get out of here now. He's gone! No. <laughs> He's right behind you. <laughs> I can smell rats from miles away. That's why they call me Benson the Great. <laughs> if they called you Benson the Smelly What? Uh, okay, now you know my true colors, yeah? Hey. No, they won't. <laughs> Chief. <laughs> Mr. Benson the Great. You of all people should know that child labor is wrong. But I didn't do anything wrong. You want to tell me this boy is all covered in charcoal because he didn't have water to bathe? How can you be so cruel to such an innocent child, messing up his schooling? It wasn't me. The boy came to me looking for a job. All I did was give him one. Now what's wrong with that, Chief? I need the job, otherwise my family will starve. You see? You see, Chief? Hey, Chief. Babu, I understand that you are trying to help out your family. But schooling is very important for you. 
You should not be working at this age. I, Mr. Chief. <laughs> Supposing I had a child, I'm not supposed to give them any work at home? Children should definitely help out at home. Yeah. But they have a right to an education and a right to have some free time to enjoy their childhood. What? Babu, as I told you, I understand you're trying to help out at home. But I cannot let this fellow misuse you. But my dad lost his job and my grandmother... I'm sorry. Uh, hey, hey, Chief. Hey, Chief. It's you who should be sorry. Babu, I would like to speak to your father. And I'm sure we can work out a solution to all this. As for you, Mr. Benson the Great, you are coming with me to the camp and you get a new spelling for the word labor. Chief. Chief. Uh, yes, yes, let's go. We have a debate today. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Let's go. And lastly, there's a saying that says you reap what you sow. Children can't expect to eat if they don't work. Bottom line is that no one likes lazy people. Thank you. planted a maize seed and watered it for only a day. He then asked the seed to produce. Was it possible? Of course not. Young children all over the world are being forced to work and leave school. Is it fair? Thank you. It's true children need to relax, do their homework and play. But times have changed and the economy is different. The family has to work harder to survive, so to keep the family as a strong unit. Even children must work. After all, Kenya is a working nation. My sister and I once missed school, trying to help my mother till the farm. A good friend of mine yesterday missed school because he thought he had to work. We all trying to help our families. It's true. Children have to work. A child helping at home with light household chores is not child labor, but a child who's missing on their childhood and school is child labor, and it must be stopped. Let the maize seed grow into a plant, then ask for maize. Let us grow up and go to school for a better future. Let children be children. Presenting the debate champions of class 4B, Leleti, Brian, James, and Babu. Yay! I want to thank you all for saving me from Benson. I was too desperate but shy to ask for help. I'm sorry. But however, Chief Matano managed to get my father a job, so all will be well at home. Yeah, and I hear Benson was taught a very good lesson. Mm. Benson, so not the great. Uh, yes, he was taught a very good lesson. Mm. Mm. A good one. Come on, guys, come on. That was a lovely episode. I really enjoyed that. Did you all enjoy that? Yes! Yes! It was great the way the chief helped Babu's family like that. Yes, it was. Now, did you hear any of the buzzwords? I heard the word responsibility. Excellent. The password was labor. Very good, Amondi. I heard the word fight. Excellent. Tell me, what else did you learn from this episode, Mara? I have learned that you should always help your friends when they need it. Mm -hmm. Very good. And I learned that child labor is wrong. Children should be allowed to be children. That's right. Excellent. I see you have all learned a lot. I think we all know what that means. It's time for us to go into the learning zone and learn something cool with Teacher Pendo. It's time for Cool Words. Hello everyone, 
and welcome back to another fun packed lesson right here on Cool Words. It's always a pleasure helping you improve your English. Are you all ready to learn? Yes! Great. Now, last lesson, we learned how we use the apostrophe with nouns to show ownership or possession. We learned that when we want to show that something belongs to someone, we put an apostrophe after the name and then we add an S. For example, Marara's mane. Oh, yes, I remember. And when we have plural nouns ending with S, we add an apostrophe at the end. For example, ladies' handbags. Excellent. Now today we are going to look at another way of using the apostrophe. I promise it won't be a difficult lesson. I wonder if anyone can guess what I'm talking about. I can't think of a clue. Yes, Reja? Is it can't? You said can't instead of cannot and we use an apostrophe in the word can't. Very, very good. I can see you've been doing your homework. Now, the apostrophe in this case is used to show omission. Let me explain. Now, sometimes when we are writing some words, we shorten them by omitting. That means we leave out some letters and use the apostrophe where the letters were. Now, these words are called contractions because they have been shortened, contracted. I don't get it, Chapendo. Do you have an example? Yes, I do. And you just said one right there. You just said don't. Now, this is a short form of do not. Now, when these two words run together, we use the short form don't. Now, the letter O has been omitted, and the apostrophe appears between the N and the T. Now, can someone give me some examples? Yes, Omondi? Did not, didn't. Very good. Someone else? Yes, Njunge? We will, will. Aha, uh -huh, excellent. Someone else? Yes, Frederick? There is theirs. Aha, uh -huh, very good. Someone else? Yes, Marwa? It is it. Very good. Now, we use shortened forms like this a lot in conversation and when writing down what people say. However, there's some words that do not follow this rule. For example, will not becomes won't. I have becomes have. Now, it makes it easier to say them. Now, let's try contracting these phrases. Here is my first one. Does not. Yes, Frederick. Doesn't. Excellent. That is. Yes, Mara. That. My next one, he would. Yes, Amwai. He'd. Aha, uh -huh. excellent. I am. Yes, Reja. Um. Aha, uh -huh. um. Should not. Yes, Somundi? Shouldn't. Super. Is not. Yes, Njunge? Isn't. Aha, uh -huh. and the last one, they will. Oh, I know, I know, I know. Yes, Marara? They'll. Aha, uh -huh. very good. I can't believe just how well you've all done. Now, there are some occasions that you wouldn't want to use these contractions. You need to remember that we use these contractions in informal writing and speech. Oh, not, Chapendo. Now you're confusing me. Not to worry, Marara. It's not difficult. Now, try and think of it this way. Now, how would a sign read? Um, do not walk on the grass or don't walk on the grass. Oh, I get it. Do not walk on the grass is more formal. Absolutely. Well, that's it for today's cool words. Right now, though, it's time to link up with my speedy. It's time for Out There. <laughs> During playtime, we make most of our friends and we have lots of fun together. But we also have to make time to support our parents at home by helping them out with the household work. However, if the child is given too much work that affects their health, their well-being or their education, then that is bad and it is called child labor. But it is good that we have some organization that take care of children's welfare. Okay. Yes. Good. So, Mr. Gilbert, how does Cradle deal with child labor? The Cradle um, is a child rights advisory, documentation, and legal center. We mainly offer legal advice and representation to children. Whenever we get such a case, quite often 
we ensure that the accused person is prosecuted um, and, and the rights of the child are upheld by the courts of law in this country. But sometimes due to the poverty levels, here in Kenya, some children have to work to be able to get basic needs like food. For example, Elvin Omosi had dropped out of school because his mother was not in a position to get food for the whole family. Elvin Omosi with his brothers live in Korokocha slums. Although him and his brothers help out with the household chores, like washing and sweeping, they know very well that they have to work a little bit harder to be able to get even a single meal for the family. He would have been in school, but he knows that would mean risking a day without food. Elvin spends most of his time at the dumping sites, trying to get anything to earn him some few coins. He is evidently tired, but he knows not any other way. This is a way of a living that he has to adapt to. This is where Elvin sells his collections for the day. Some of the stuff he comes across could be dangerous because he collects this with bare hands. He is at great risk of injuring himself or even getting sick. Wow, two kilograms and some coins too. It is good to share responsibilities, but because this makes Elvin miss school, it will definitely affect his life in future too. On a good day, Elvin comes home with some little money to help feed his family. However, this denies Elvin the chance to learn and play with his friends. On the other hand, Muteti sells groundnuts to willing customers from the roadside and still makes time to go to school. Muteti is in Standard 7 in Mukuru Primary School. And with the little money he makes, he is able to buy himself school books and even food for the whole family. The streets of Nairobi, just like any other town in Kenya, have lots of children who are begging in the streets. Apart from being denied the privilege to go to school, these kids stay in the cold for the better part of the night. It is true that the poverty levels here in Kenya are pushing the children to work to get the basic needs. But it is wrong to make children work so hard, and it is our responsibility to protect the rights of the children. Every child has a right to a good life, education, shelter, and clothing. Bye, children. That was really interesting. Oh, oh yes, and what Maspidi learned at Cradle was great. We had the buzzwords labor and responsibility. Exactly, Marara, but now it's time for Marara to do some learning. Oh, really? Uh. Yes. Yes, that is right. <laughs> and it's time for our studio guests to do a little bit of running, which means it's time for... Number Now, this is a game that we invented so that we could help Marara with his maths. Oh, yes, please. Help me. Now, the game is very simple. On the blackboard, there are three sounds. Just like this example sum here, you'll notice there's a little something missing. Now, all our number runners have to do is solve the sum and then go and get the solution from the number pit down here. Now, we didn't want to make it too easy, so you have to pick the solution from among all of these numbers. Once you've found the number that you need, you go back to the blackboard. When you get here to the board, you need to make sure that you put your number in the correct position, like this. Make sure you don't get your numbers mixed up, because the moment you put your number here, it's stuck, meaning you cannot change it. That's right. Now, once you've solved the sum, all you have to do is run, run, run across to your teammates and tag in the person to do the next sum, like this. There is a catch. You have three sums to solve in just 45 seconds. So, we all need to cheer our number runners with the correct answer. Are the rules clear? Yes! Very good. Now, you must remember, with number run, speed is everything. Because if you do manage to solve the three sums in 45 seconds or less, you get to take these wonderful maths books 
back to your school. Are the rules clear? Yes! Are you ready to play number one? Yes! Excellent. Very good. Let's have our number runner, number one. Here, please. Let's put 45 seconds on the clock and reveal that first sum. 12 plus what is 20? Go. Help her with the right answer. Help her with the right answer. 12 plus what is 20? Help her, help her. Help her, help her. Help her, help her. Find it. You sure that's your final answer? Yes. Tag the next person. Tag the next person. Me, 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 me. 11 multiplied by 3 is what? Go. Get it, get it. Good. You sure that's your final answer? Me, me. Tag the next person. Get the next person. What divided by four is 12? Go. You sure that's your final answer? You sure? Stop Good. the clock. Just in time, let's put it there. All right then, let's quickly look at what you did. On to the first sum. We asked you, 12 plus what is 20? You gave us eight. Is eight the correct answer? Yes! You're right, eight is the correct answer. Second sum, we asked you 11 multiplied by three is what? You gave 33. Is 33 the correct answer? Yes! Excellent! And on to the third sum. We asked you what divided by 4 is 12. You brought us 3. Is 3 the correct answer? Yes! Think about it. What divided by 4 is 12? Don't worry, we'll work it out together. We'll work it out together. It's 48. 48 divided by 4 is 12. So let's put it on together. I'll just put it on top of this one. But the question is, did you manage to solve the two sums out of three in time? Charlie, what do you think? Well, out of the three sums, you managed to complete two. Sadly, you did not manage to complete this last sum within the 45 seconds, but for completing the two sums, you have done really well. Let's give them a round of applause, everyone. <laughs> and don't worry, you're still winners because you have helped me with my maths homework. We have another half hour of a brilliant news and show to go. Oh yes, so do not touch that dial. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Why don't we remind everyone who is watching us at home what this week's Nozone buzzwords are? Labor. Responsibility. Beat. Try. Fight. Now for you at home, make sure you listen out for this buzzword. See how many of them you will remember throughout oh, yes. this show. And I wrote all of them down. Oh, that's very good, Mara. Now, could you please tell us what Ranger Rukia is going to be teaching us about today? Now, this creature lives in water, mm -hmm. loves to sunbathe, okay. and loses teeth every time it eats. Loses teeth. Hmm. Huh. Well. I don't know. Maybe you know, but why don't we all go find out together on Wild Zone? Hello, Nozone Rangers. Today, we're going to learn about a very special animal that lives in rivers and lakes. I wonder why we have logs floating around here. Let's take a closer look. Oh, look out! Those aren't really logs, they're crocodiles. Crocodiles are very interesting animals, and today we're going to spend some time with them and learn all we can about them. Wow, look at that. Crocodiles have very large mouths, don't they? Crocodiles are cold-blooded animals, which means that their body temperature is affected by their surroundings. In the morning when it is cool, crocodiles have to heat up by basking in the sun. In the afternoons when it is too hot, Crocodiles like resting like this with their mouths wide open to cool off. Crocodiles have tough scaly skin, powerful legs and sharp claws. 
They have powerful tails, which they use to move their heavy bodies quietly and swiftly through water. Can you see where their nostrils are? Right there, at the end of their snout. This allows them to breathe while the rest of their bodies are underwater. Crocodiles are very special creatures. They have a secondary eyelid that is thin and translucent. When they swim underwater, this lid protects their eyes and allows them to keep seeing. It is just like swimming goggles, crocodile style. Crocodiles are very clever hunters. They can sit very still in shallow water and look like floating logs until an animal comes really close. Even a very large crocodile can swim underwater without making the slightest noise. It then strikes at an amazing speed and captures its prey. If the animal is small, the crocodile swallows it whole. If it's too big, the crocodile rolls and twists to tear it to pieces. Look at that. I wonder what toothpaste they use. Crocodiles don't have to eat all the time like us. They can live for months without feeding as they store energy in the form of fat. When a crocodile lays eggs, it digs a hole in the ground using its hind feet. It lays about 50 eggs inside the nest. After 65 to 100 days, the little baby crocodiles break out of the eggs. If the weather was very cold or very hot, the baby crocodiles will be girls. But if it was just warm, they will be boys. Baby crocodiles are very small, about the size of your normal drawing ruler. But they will grow into deadly predators. Crocodiles are very dangerous to humans. They are responsible for killing hundreds of people each year. So next time you see a log floating in the water, it may be clever to stay away, don't you think? See you next time. Bye! Wow, that was amazing. Did you all enjoy that? Yes! Now, we know why crocodiles lie in the sun for so long. I think they do that so that they can get heat from the sun, right? Yes, uh, but when they're basking, hey, be careful. Don't go too close to them because they can snap your hand in just one single bite. Oh, but Marara, <laughs> did you see how big that mouth was? They won't only get your hand, they'll get your arm <laughs> and they'll get your leg. <laughs> That's true. It's time for hot numbers. Hello there and welcome back to Hot Numbers. Are you all ready for today's lesson? Yes! Great. Now today we are going to be learning about maths. But teacher Pendo, we are always learning about maths. No, Mara, I didn't say maths. I said mass. M-A-S-S. Aha! Very mass. Good. Now, mass is the amount of matter in a substance or a body. Now, matter is what things are made of. Now, it's important to know that mass is the same wherever the body is. Now, many people confuse mass and weight. Now, the weight of a body depends on the pull of gravity. Your weight can change depending on where you are, but the mass always remains the same. Now, we usually weigh mass in kilograms, kgs. Now, we use a beam balance to measure mass. I brought one with me. Aha! Uh -huh. I was wondering what that was for. Now I know it's called a beam balance. Yes, it is. Now we will use this beam balance to find out which object has more mass. Is it this weight or this bag of sand? Now who would like to guess? Yes, give it. A packet of sand. Okay, let's see whether you're right. Just hold that for me. You are right, the sand is heavier than the weight. Now what do I need to do if I want the sand to weigh the same as the weight? Oh, I know, I know, I yes, know. Yes, Marara? Remove some sand. Is he right? Yes! Okay, now let's see whether that is right. So someone use this spoon to remove some sand from the bag.
Well done. Now the beam is now balanced. The weight weighs the same as the sand. So they have the same mass. They both weigh one kilogram. Now I want to divide this sand into half. Just hold that for me. Just remove that. So we are dividing it into half. Now let me remove some Now, who can tell me the mass of these two packets of sand? Remember, at first it was one kg. So we've divided it into half. Yes, Amoy? A half kg. Yes, they both weigh half a kilogram. Now, what is a half of a half a kilogram? Oh, I know, I know. Yes, Marara? Now, you taught me if I divide a circle into two, that is a half. And if I divide it into four, then that is a quarter. If you divide the packet again, it will be a quarter of a kilogram. Well done, Morara. You're absolutely right. Now let's have some fun weighing some of these items. But before we do, I'd like you to estimate the mass of each item. Now, if you think it's more than a kilogram, you say it's greater than. If you think it's less than a kilogram, you say less than. And if you think it's the same as a kilogram, you say? Equal. Very good. Now, let's get started. Now, my first item is this bag of flour. Now, you tell me, do you think it's more than a kilogram, less than a kilogram, or equals to a kilogram? Yes, Ndivi? Equal to. Aha. Uh -huh. How about this group? Yes, Marwa? Equal to a kilogram. Okay, let's see if you're right. Just hold that for me. So I put my weight here and put this bag here. You're right. So the mass of this uh, flour is equal to one kilogram. Now let's move on to the next item. Just hold for me that. Now I have this four mangoes. So do you think it's equal to less than or greater than one kilogram? Yes, Marwa? Greater than. Yes, Ndivi? Greater than. Oh. The mass of these four mangoes is less than a kilogram. But you all understand all about mass, don't you? Yes. yes! Well, that's all we have time for today on Hot Numbers. Well, it's now time to get RT. It's time for At Zone. Art is not just about painting and drawing and the things that we make, it's also about music. So I'm going to introduce to you our guest today, and this is Barbara Guantai, and she's going to tell us what she does. Barbara, tell us more about yourself. I am an artist, I'm a musician, a songwriter, I'm an author, I'm a painter, and that makes me an artist. So yeah, art is plenty of stuff. And you have a guitar. Could you tell us a bit more about that? This is a lovely instrument. A guitar is a string musical instrument. Now, what happens is that when I strum uh, the string, it gives a distinct note. Now, all the strings give different distinct notes. Mm -hmm. And then we have the frets. And this is where I can press on the string differently to get a chord. Sounds good? Yeah, that, that sounds That just really sounds like fun. <laughs> it sounds really <laughs> lovely. Yeah. And you write your own songs? Yes, I do. Now, how, how do you do that? Sometimes I use the guitar, I play a chord, 
like mm. that. And it might give me an idea. Or I just write my song without the instrument and I use it to accompany me when I'm performing. I want to hear one of the songs that you've written. Would you play us a song? Gladly. Africa, Malubahanisu, Pondolwayo, Mongo Ibariki, Africa, looking back to your art, never made you backward, looking back to your dreams, baby, never made you backward, looking back to your song, never made you backward. Africa, yo, Alubaha, Nisu, Pondolwa, yo, Mongo, Ibariki, Africa, yo, remember looking, but don't ever make you backward, ba, baby, ba, 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 ba. Wow, oh, brother, thank you so much oh, for brother, sharing you. that song. Well, kids, I hope you're feeling inspired. I definitely want to try singing. And if you come across a guitar, try playing and then make some music. Goodbye. Bye-bye. That guitar was so beautiful. I want to learn how to play. That'll have to wait until a bit later, because right now it's time for something a little bit different. It's time for us to put our brains into gear and for you at home to see if you can beat our studio guests. It's time for Spell It. Animal, Animal. chapter, building, narrow, building. respect, respect. deep, vegetable, work. 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 Welcome to Spell It. Amwai, Marwa, and Omondi. You're about to step out of the shadows and into the light. You will compete for the top prize of the Nozon Spelling Champion. If you win, you will go home with your very own Nozon Dictionary. Each contender has just 30 seconds to spell correctly as many words as possible. If you want to hear your word again, just say repeat and the word will be repeated for you. Now just remember, each word is worth one point. So the more words you spell correctly, the greater your chances of winning. Are the rules clear? Yes. Amwai, you're up first. Please take your place on the spelling zone. Amwai, your 30 seconds start now. Run. R U N beat B E A T walk W A L K throw T H R O U G H fairly F A I R Y inflict I N F I T C T E D children C H I L D R E N humiliate H U H U is up Please step back. Marwa, you're up next. Please take your place on the spelling zone. Marwa, your 30 seconds start now. Put. P-U-T. Jump. J-U-M-P. Play. P-L-A-Y. Abuse. A-B-U-S-E. Disobey. D-I-S-O-B-E-Y Justice G-U-S-T-I-C-E Struggle S-T-R-A-G-L Education A-D-U-C-A-T-I-O-N Time is up. Omondi, you're up next. Please take your place on the spelling zone. Omondi, your 30 seconds start now. Try. T 
T-R-Y. Skip. S-K-I-P. Swim. S-W-I-M. Fight. F-I-G-H-T. Labor. L-A-B-O-U-R. Harass. H-A-R-R-A-S. Mistreat. M-I-S-T-R-E-A-T. Fairness. F A A F A I R the end time is up. Please step back. Well, after that addition of spellets, I think we'll just skip straight into the results. In third place, we have Amwai. Let's give her a round of applause. Congratulations, Amwai. In second place, the total of five points, we have Marwa, which means our winner today with six points is Omondi. Let's give him a round of applause. Well done. Step forward, Omondi. Step forward. Congratulations, Omondi. You are today's Nozone Spelling Champion. Well done. I'll show everyone at home your dictionary. Another round of applause for Omondi. <laughs> well done, all of you, because you have spelled very many words correctly. I think we deserve to take a break. So why don't we all sit back, relax, and enjoy another exciting edition of African Tales. Hello, everyone. I hope you're sitting comfortably. I'm going to read you a story about a lazy and very bad crocodile. I hope you won't forget to listen out to these week's buzzwords. Many, many years ago, when animals could talk and mountains could walk, all the animals worked and played happily together. The elephants washed each other with water from their trunks, the monkeys would comb each other's hair, and the birds would peck flies from the rhinos' backs. All the animals had lots of responsibilities, but they always made time to play and sing and run and jump and skip, for they were happy and they were all friends. In those days, ostrich and crocodile were the best of friends. After working and playing, they would usually walk home together. Even though they were the best of friends, their behavior was very different. Ostrich would run everywhere looking for food, but Crocodile was very lazy and always complained about having to work. Crocodile loved to complain. In fact, he liked nothing better than to lie in the sun and complain all day long. He hated responsibility and would always think of ways of getting other animals to do his work for him. One day, Crocodile was feeling particularly lazy. He couldn't even be bothered to find something to eat. And so, he decided to trick his friend Ostrich and have him for lunch. So that day, Crocodile just lay in the sand, singing quietly to himself and waited for Ostrich to come by. When Ostrich had finished working and playing with his other friends, he went to find Crocodile. As soon as Crocodile saw Ostrich coming, he started crying and begging Ostrich to help him. He wept and sobbed so loudly that Ostrich almost started to cry himself. He hated seeing his friend so upset. Ostrich leant down to get as close as possible to Crocodile, hoping to offer him some comfort. Oh, help me, help me wailed Crocodile. I have the most dreadful toothache. It hurts so much, I beg you. Look inside my mouth and see which tooth is hurting me so terribly. And Crocodile opened his mouth wide to allow Ostrich to look inside. Ostrich was so concerned for his friend, he didn't even think twice about looking inside Crocodile's mouth. He would never think that his friend might want to bite him. And so, Ostrich put his head right inside Crocodile's mouth and started looking for the tooth that was causing Crocodile so much pain. Snap! Crocodile shut his mouth with the most enormous snap. 
trapping ostrich's head between his jaws. Then Crocodile started pulling Ostrich towards the river where he intended to feast on him. Now, even though Crocodile was very strong, you should also know that Ostrich are also very strong. They have big thick legs to help them run fast. And so, realizing that he had been tricked, Ostrich dug his feet into the ground and tried to pull his head out of Crocodile's mouth. As Crocodile pulled in one direction, Ostrich pulled in another. The two animals pulled with all their strength. Ostrich pulled and pulled until Crocodile began to feel his teeth cracking. Crocodile tried to bite even harder, but it was no use. Ostrich was too strong. All the pulling started to hurt Crocodile's teeth so much that he had to let go of Ostrich. As soon as he was free, poor Ostrich ran for his life. From that day, Ostrich has a very, very long neck and has never been friends with Crocodile ever again. Up to today, Crocodile still lies lazily in the sun, opening his mouth wide, waiting for a more foolish animal to have him for his lunch. The end. What a funny story. Did you hear any of the buzzwords? I bet you did. Well, that's all we had time for today. Hope to see you soon. Goodbye. That was such a good story. Yes, that bad friend was so bad. But I like African tales where everything always ends well. Thank you so much for joining us for today's show. We've loved having you here with us. And for you at home, thank you so much for joining us. We've had a blast. Well, come on, everyone. Let's say goodbye. Bye! Bye.